Alrighty, welcome to another 4 on 4 Vintage Cube Team Draft. We've got a great seat here. We are passing to Tom Martell. You'll love to see it. It is myself, BK, Charles, <laughs> that's uh, Charles Wong, and Updraft Elemental, along with my friend Mock Sapphire here, battling against Tom Martell, Sam Rolf, Quiniac, and Dan. So Tom is probably going to take Necromancy and be a little unhappy about it. Not, neither of us really like Reanimator that much, but Necromancy is the best card in the pack by so much. BK is probably going to take Hallowed Fountain. He loves lands. Maybe a Tidebinder. Probably not once upon a time. Probably a little too early for that. Kind of an ideal pack. Just a Mox and, and nothing. Okay, Necromancy is not nothing, but still. Here, this is actually a pretty clear Preordain. Teferi is good. Honestly, I think Teferi and Preordain are comparable. But I would just take a one-mana mono blue card when I have a blue Mox instead of trying to take a three-mana white card when there's tons of good three drops in the cube. This also conveniently doesn't give Tom any good black card because he's not going to take long goodbye. Probably he's going to take Chain Lightning because red black is pretty good. Depends what his first pick is, obviously. Maybe he first picked a card that would lead him to take Hallowed Fountain and then Teferi, but that seems pretty unlikely. And take Mox Sapphire. And then third pick, the best card in the pack, I believe, is Fiery Confluence. Sam Rolf's passing to us, and he's a tricky one. He did pass us a pack with Chain Lightning just now, so he might be aware that he's passing a lot of red. There's also Balance, which works pretty nice with Mox, but honestly, I've had enough medium experiences with Balance that I'm not to the point where I want to take it over Fiery Confluence, which I think is always good. There's also Ancient Tomb, but I, I think I'd rather just take Confluence. I also really like Blue-Red. I think it's a pretty good color combination. Oh, there's Dismember, which is an amazing card. There's also Underworld Breach. Don't really like that Sam knows that he passed me Breach here, but I think I'm going to take it anyway. I have a really good start. I mean, a Mox and a Preordain are both exactly what you want in Breach decks. Confluence fine, too. Does pass Tom a Dismember, but... Yeah, what can you do? Look, if Tom has taken Necromancy Chain Lightning, Dismember's not even that high value because Red Black has access to tons of great removal. It's a lot better in like a blue-white deck, which maybe he went Hallowed Fountain to Fairy, but I don't think that's quite that likely. Anyways, I think I'm going to take Breach, pass a bunch of blue-red cards. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's a chance Iteration comes back. That would be pretty nice if it did. Here, pretty into taking Subtlety. I do like red lands, so but red, white, and, and uh, red, green, and blue, green, like all the lands are kind of adjacent to what I'm doing. Ignoble's great, and, and Utopia Sprawl is okay, but haven't passed too much green, I don't think. So I don't really mind doing that. Plus, BK loves these cards. So I'm just going to take Subtlety here. <sighs> Probably, oh man, I don't like passing Dark Ritual, but I haven't passed much black besides the one Necromancy. So I guess I'm not too worried about it. I might just Teferi here. Teferi is pretty good if in this style of deck. There's also Loren, but I think Teferi is a better card to splash. Also, blue cards for subtlety are always nice. Don't think Zeotor's Proving Ground is what I want, and I don't think it's Reckless Impulse either. So I, I think I'll take Teferi there. Hmm. This is not an ideal pack. There's two decent black cards. I could take Night Scythe. 3 mana, 3 1 flying vehicle with crew 2, but it also makes a 2 2 artifact. It's pretty solid. Death Greater Champion is a little bit aggressive for what I look like I'm doing. There's also Get Lost, which could be decent if I end up like Jeskai. But I kind of like Nightside as just a body in play. And then now there's really nothing. I guess I'll just take a red green surveil land. I don't mind passing Unmarked Grave, Ashen Rider. These are not that great of cards. There's Sylvan Library, but I'm hoping that gets to BK. I think a red-green surveil land is marginal, but I'll, I'll take it anyway. Okay. So the Teferi departure from just red-blue is not my favorite. But we have the start, even if you discount Breach, to a decent red-blue tempo deck. I mean, Night Scythe into Subtlety is a pretty nice curve, especially sped up with a Sapphire. And Fiery Confluence is pretty nice. And yeah, we're open to getting a Brain Freeze in pack two because Tom doesn't know I have Breach and might pass me a Brain Freeze. And there's a Rite of Flame here, but I, I don't, this is not looking like a Rite of Flame deck. I don't even, I don't think it's particularly good with Breach either. It's just not really that much of a combo. So let, let's see what we can do. All right, and here, a bunch of white and green cards, including a white green land. I might take Sail into the West. I have a red green duel, and Sail into the West helps in the Breach plan, so. 
Let's just spec on that. We'll put the, the dual land in and we'll see if that kind of develops. We have a lot of ways we can go. Like this is, this is a very flexible start. I'm pretty locked into preordain Sapphire subtlety. Uh, do, I don't think I want a blue black talisman. <laughs> I've been liking big red lately. Maybe I just take the Carnosaur. That's a fine card. All right, all right. I, I'm kind of in. I'm gonna get some more rows here. All right, so Carnosaur, and I don't think I want Lumberjack. Yeah, Tribal Flames is also a consideration, but I like Carnosaur. And I guess I'll just take Temple Garden now, even though though I could take Robber of the Rich. Hold on. Temple Garden helps if I'm playing both Teferi and Sail into the West. I don't know how likely that is. Robber of the Rich is, I think, pretty good if you're an aggressive deck. Oh, I'll take a Thundering Falls. That's a great wheel. Over Walking Ballista and Lingering Souls, sure. And then Taiga. All right. We got a bunch of red green lands. And here, Reckless Impulse, I think, seems better than Dwarven Miner. Dwarven Miner's on its way out. Oh, Noise Marine. Big Red is live. We haven't seen a Name Sticker Goblin yet. I feel like we're getting cut in blue, but that kind of doesn't matter. Oh, that's a Soul Ring. Soul Ring Sapphire. We are doing it. Passing a Tarn and a Chrome Mox, sure. Inti, Brainstorm, Adeline, Bitter Triumph, Batter Skull, Containment Priest. Yeah, probably not going to get anything back. Outside chance I get Brainstorm back. 100% chance of opening a second piece of power now. Oh, baby. So, wow, this that Soul Ring. Really a genius for taking this Carnosaur. Soul Ring really works nicely with Carnosaur and Noise Marine, to be honest. Though you don't want to cascade into, into Soul Ring, but it's still accelerating those out is real nice. All right, this Breach so far is not getting in there. Sail into the West actually is looking a lot better now that I have Soul Ring, because two pieces of Broken Acceleration helps very nicely there. Oh man, what of a bummer of a pack. Martel, Martel really did it this time. He's passing an Atroxa that I cannot use at all, and a bunch of unplayables. Eey, I might just take a Troxa just because I don't want to pass it. I mean, there's just nothing for me. I guess there is Dragon's Rage Channeler is the card I would take out of this pack. But I am just going to take the Atroxa. Oh, I, now there's a Through the Breach. And this pack doesn't have anything I really care about. Cryptic is looking just okay. And Through the Breach with Carnosaur is not that bad. All right, let's take Through the Breach here. Passing a Dothy Voidwalker, sure. And now, oh, now there's a Gristlebrand? All right, we're, we've kind of adjusted. Take this Teferi out for now. It's not looking too hot. Well, I don't think I want to take Duress or Reprieve here. Yeah, let's just take Gristlebrand and then decent chance we will show until, let's see, Endurance, Natural Order, Crucible Top, Kavu, Scrubland, Duress. Yeah, pretty good chance we will show until, I would say. And then Chaos Defiler is a pretty good card, but I'm not that good at casting it. Echo of Eons has outs to be pretty strong in this deck. I would need to pick up Lion's Eye Diamond, but I'm already kind of looking for that for Breach. Or I could just take Embroiled Caliph. Probably should just take this. 4-2, you become the Monarch, and if they attack you while you're the Monarch, they take one damage for each card in their hand. Passing a Chaos Defiler, but I feel like that's not the worst. Yeah. Wild Caliph is in. <laughs> I love it when Thopter, Foundry, and Sword are in the same pack. It's so funny. I'm just going to take Odawara here, I think. I could take World Spine in case I get Flash, but I feel like I don't get past Flash very often, and Odawara is a really nice card to have access to. Okay, Gold Spin to go with the Soul Ring. And it can help hard cast some of these bigger things. You attack twice, you can cast Grossal Brand. That's not like completely insane. I, I like Gold Spin more than Inferno Titan. Don't need these lands. Really could use more blue-red lands. I have the one. I guess that's not too bad. Reckless Impulse probably not making it in. The only green card I have is Sail into the West, but I have two red-green lands, so it's pretty low cost to play that. I could also have taken Paradise Druid. I'm getting pretty cut on blue, but I, I think it's fine. You can be cut on blue and still play it. That's just how cube works. All right, and this pack has... So Tom, it feels like Tom's not playing Black Red, <laughs> given the Fire Covenant, the Chaos Defiler, Necron Death Mark. I think I just take Season Pyro. And part of the reason I, I feel a little locked into blue is Subtlety's really good, and I have some other blue cards I want to play. Preordain's really good. But yeah, you know, if I end up in a spot where I don't have to play blue, that's fine too. So now I could take Dress Down or Blood Tithe. Oh, wow. 
I, I guess Adeline didn't get taken. Huh. Interesting. Um, I wonder if I'm going to see black cards in pack three. I don't have any black lands. I kind of want to just take dress down as a result and stick to my guns here. I don't think I'm going to turn into a reanimator deck. Here I could take Bayou or Mindstone. Bayou is a kind of nice way to just maybe cast Atroxa, and I don't think Mindstone is something I'm going to miss too much, so I think I'll just take the Bayou. Now, I could take Lamplight Phoenix, though that one's leaving the cube very soon here, or one of these white cards. I guess I'll take the Phoenix and probably not play it. Oh, wow. Uh, the card I wanted out of this pack didn't wheel either. I don't remember what it was, but I guess I'll take Territorial Kavu. I have a Bayou. You never know. Yeah, and I, I now I don't remember. And I think Tide Taker is the strongest. Well, is Sam playing white? You know, if he's playing white, he can have the choice of those two cards. It's fine. I won't pass him to Cathar Commando, though. All right. Well, going into pack three, this is a little interesting. <laughs> uh, really a skill game here. We're, we're, we're just big reading it all the way. Passing a Solitude and a Caves of Chaos Adventure. So at least two really good cards. Tom's going to take Caves of Chaos Adventure, but hopefully BK is in a position to take Solitude. Whatever. I'm going to take my Mana Crypt and stop worrying. How I learned to stop worrying and love the Mana Crypt. All right. It's time. I'm going to take name sticker goblin i actually think it's the right pick like i've got carnosaur goldspan noise marine Khalif are all great even through the breach is great to accelerate out i have this acceleration i, I mean i could take mana leak here but honestly i i think i think i might just be looking at like mono red get that lamplight phoenix in get the reckless impulse in get the breach out probably unless something changes yeah that's fine. I don't know. I'll take the name sticker goblin. Okay, so this pack has Emrakul, which is good with Breach, but I already have three Breach targets and just the one Breach. I kind of want to just take Headliner Scarlet. Four mana, three, three, haste. ETBs they can't block, and every turn you exile the top card and you can play it. Or I could take Olafon, or not Olafon, uh, Flame Tongue. Flame Tongue's also really good. Um. No, this deck's a little more defensive. Let's take Flame Tongue. Let's pass on Othari. Let's uh, see what else we can pick up. Oh, Carnage Interpreter. Great Carnage Interpreter deck. I'm just not even playing any of these colorless cards. Or these, these, these lands. I'm just playing Mono Red. Slamming Carnage Interpreter over Flame Slash and Bone Crusher. And hoping to pick up a few more playables. Yeah, if I have to, I'll, I'll adjust somehow. But I like where I'm at. There's LED for that Breach, but I don't have Echo Vions. I think I just take Figure of Destiny here, funnily enough. If I get, look, if I get Brain Freeze, I'll probably put the Breach back in. But if I get Brain Freeze, I can still Brain Freeze myself and then play Sapphire Crypt. And that's usually enough to kill them. I don't need the LED. And it combines with none of my other cards, really. All right, Figure of Destiny it is. I think that's better than Pirate Spellbomb when I'm going to be mono, blue, mono red. I also could consider Breach, but I don't even have a, car, a deck that's really good at Breaching. I would like to pick up a sneak attack if I can find one. The show and tell didn't wheel. That was the card. Wow. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. I was just thinking, what else is there besides sneak? And I guess the answer is show and tell. Okay, let's see what else we can pick up here. Oh, here we go. Bonehorde Dracosaur. Oh, this, this, this name sticker goblin is money. All right, can I get a seething song? A seething song would be so good for this deck. I would be extremely happy. Now I wish I took that Rite of Flame. Oof. That, that's going to end up being a, a big oof. I took a red-green duel over it. Yeah, at the time in, we were at, I think that pick was fine. But I wish I had that right of flame now, I'll tell you that much. Ooh, there's a sneak attack. you love to see it. All right, now now it makes the whole Atroxa Gristlebrand thing so much stronger. Now that I pick up sneak, I kind of wish I took Emrakul. But the thing is, I'll just wheel the, uh, the Ulamog in most of the times anyway, I feel like. So that seems fine to me. Now I'm at 22 playables, but I kind of have three mana sources there, so I still need a few more cards here. I feel like I can get there, though. I've got plenty of packs. Oh, Archon? Archon with Breach and Sneak. Yeah, I'm in for that. I think that's still better than taking, like, a Firestorm. Pass a Grief. Oh, and Glorybringer. There's also Rabble Master, but I, I'm in for the big stuff. I've got Mana Crypt and Soul Ring. Let's just slam Glorybringer, and now easy Magda. I think Magda is going to be really good in this deck. I am a little light on removal. But I have Flame Tongue, Glorybringer, Noise Marine. 
Okay, Headliner Scarlet Wield, so did Oliphant, so did Ulamog. But now that I picked up Archon, I feel like I don't need another thing. I'll just take the Headliner Scarlet here. And now I have, <laughs> I have enough playables now, shocker. I, I might even be able to cut Reckless Impulse at some point here. My, only, my main concern with Reckless Impulse is when you flip over one of these three big creatures, it does nothing. Uh, I guess I don't want to pass Baleful Mastery. It's that or Kinnon. Tom could easily have taken that Basalt Monolith. Hmm. I'll take the Baleful Mastery anyway. Now we'll take Shinobi. And Tom joked going into this draft. He literally did in our group chat. All right, now it's the it's time for the Big Red competition. Like, you know, who's going to level who? Are you going to draft Big Red again? Because I did the draft before this. I ended up mono red, literal mono red. <laughs> Amazing. Let's get to deck building and uh, <laughs> see how this goes. <laughs> All right. Well, there's not much to say about this deck because uh, besides it's the nuts, I've got no mono red playables in my sideboard. This is 17 lands or 14 land rather plus uh, the three mana artifacts. And that's what we're going to go with. I guess I'll put a couple islands in the sideboard just in case. Well, we're going to go with Mirage Mountains, I suppose. Boom. And sure, I'll put a couple islands because I might want to side in like Odawara or something. But yeah, no, this is this looks basically perfect. I could put in a Surveil Land, but I'm just not going to. I don't, I'm, it's not going to help me cast anything, and I don't want to draw tap land in this deck, so... This deck is awesome. I'm really looking forward to this. And we're battling Martell round one. It's time to get in there. All right, what's my team working with? BK had to hate the solitude, but he's got a nice one. He's got a time walk with Mystical Tutor and Spellseeker to find it. A bunch of good blue-green tempo type cards. Got the Brainstorm, Questing Beast, Glissa. It's actually going to cut this turn. We'll go for Endurance and Cobra. But in any case, uh, great mana, Caracas and Library. Yeah, BK's deck looks awesome. Charles has a deck. He definitely does. Uh, he's got Oath of Druids, Channel, Ren and Six with Strip Mine, Oust and Swords. He's got uh, Fire Covenant, Parallax Wave. Yeah, Tamiya, why not? With the Tali, Torsten, and Emrakul. <laughs> Looks great. Demonic Tutor, Gorio's Vengeance, Shallow Grave. Yeah, this deck's going to be cooking. And then uh, Updraft has a pretty solid Time Twister, Echo of Eons, Memory Jar deck with Hole Breacher and Leovold as well as Flash World Spine. He's going to cut the natural order. We talked about that. Good mana and a Force of Will. So I like our team's decks. I think we got good ones, though. Apparently Sam Rolf got past the nuts, so we'll find out. All right, time for round one against Tom. On the draw, I'm going to keep this hand. It, it's a little bit slow, but first of all, if I draw Soul Ring or Mana Vault, then uh, or a uh, Mana Crypt, we're, we're obviously cooking. And if I draw any of my sneak targets, I wouldn't mind that. But let's just chill here for now name sticker goblin would be a nice one but tom actually knows the secret technology which is if you kill the name sticker goblin in response to the trigger you don't get the mana it's just how it works for whatever reason so if i play it into pirate spell bomb which is now gone uh, <laughs> that could be a risk next turn i'm hoping to draw either a spell or an accelerant or something Okay, here's Blade Splicer and no lands. All right, well, we're going to slam Sneak. And it's not going to be the best Sneak in the world, but I have nothing else to cast. So play Sneak Attack. And look, if he kills it, then that's fine. If he doesn't, I'm probably going to play Glorybringer or Noise Marine. Honestly, I'm not, not even going to use the Sneak Attack next turn. <laughs> so... I suppose I don't mind if he does something to it. Let's see what this is. Dak, fade in, take my mocks. Oh, I don't like that. All right, all right. Hmm, that's pretty annoying, actually. All right, let's see if I can find something to do here. Nope. Um, I guess I'll sneak in Glorybringer. Wow, how disappointing. I haven't really drawn all land so far. I had a glory bringer, I suppose. All right, attack, deck, fade, and exert, and then kill the golem. And kill the deck. All right, I mean, I'm at 16, facing down a 1-1. One, one. Sneak and play means I've got a bunch of live draws. If I draw Atroxa, if I draw 
uh, Archon, Gristlebrand, any of those things probably win me the game. And Tom is not putting too much pressure on me. Jace the Mind Sculptor, okay. Interesting. Hmm. So the problem with sneaking and noise is I don't get the cascade. The problem with cascading is I won't necessarily kill Jace. But I really don't want to let Jace alive, but sneaking and noise marine just to kill Jace seems pretty weak. Hopefully I draw, I mean, this would be a fine turn to draw Soul Ring or Mana Crypt. Though, honestly, the best thing I could probably draw is a Trox. I, would, I assume I would just win if I did. Stealing that Mox was pretty brutal. Because now I'm a turn behind, but I just need to draw spells. Like, if I draw like a Season Pyromancer or something, that's great too. All right, he's hitting, and I don't think he's played a land yet. Yeah. All right. Oh, and a Mox, too. Into Balance. He has one card in hand. Um. Yeah, okay, that doesn't really matter. I'll keep Noise Marine and discard Breach in two mountains. <laughs> it doesn't do much for me. Okay, so now I've got a lot of outs here. Let's see what I draw. Mana Crypt? Oh, Atroxa. There we go. Sneak in Atroxa, reveal, let's see, I get creature land and sorcery. So creature, probably want Carnosaur, so I'm going to get mountain, I'm going to get fiery confluence. Oh, I think I might, yeah, I think I will take the, the rimp, the trumpeting Carnosaur here. I think that's better than Bonehorde Rexor and Boiled Caliph. Yeah, that's close. There's a lot of good creatures to hit here. Is it 19? I mean, I can hit him for 14. Oh, I can just... It's not quite lethal, but I think it's pretty close. So let's take these. Let's sneak in Carnosaur. And then that'll be enough to sneak in Noise Marine as well. Cast Soul Ring. And then... Oh, and, and I have Fiery Confluence, so this is way more than lethal now. I guess there's no reason to even show him Noise Marine. Cast Fiery Confluence, deal six to each opponent. All right, and that'll do it. We got game one. All right, I told you, I just need to draw Troxa. That was more than enough. And I have no cards I can sideboard, so I will not be sideboarding. Let's see what Tom has. <laughs> the great part is he knows about Soul Ring and Mox. He doesn't know about the Mana Crypt. Dak is really annoying here, but if I draw if I draw any oh mox of his own. If I draw any spell here, this is so sick. Can I get a turn one like Headliner Scarlet or Ember Wild Caliph? Alright, player Xander's Lounge. Alright, let's draw here. Action, action, action. Um I kind of think I just pass here because I don't want to get Dak Fadened and I can still play a turn two Carnosaur with all these artifacts here. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think there's a big reason to, to unload the full force and fury of, of all my cards. Basalt Monolith. Yeah, I knew Tom would take Basalt Monolith for some reason. Ooh, into a Nettle Cyst, okay. I don't need to glory bring her that one yet, I don't think. Soul Ring, Mox, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt. <laughs> this happening against Martell is just by far the best. <laughs> All right, big one. Let's get a Noise Marine here. That would be such gas. Uh, noise Marine into like a sneak attack, maybe? Oh, Headliner Scarlet? All right, well, we take those. <laughs> and Slam. Yeah, you can't block. And hit with the Carnosaur, or hit with the, the Scarlet. And next turn, <laughs> let's see what Tom has. He's got a lot of things to worry about here, including this Glorybringer coming next turn. Yeah. All right, so he's got a Savannah. He's got all five colors. He can do some things. Let's see what those things are. Next turn, I'm going to get to exile my top card, and I have a Glorybringer coming. So hopefully he doesn't have like an infinite combo. Sign of Draco. Oh, 4-4 lifelinker now? Eh, pretty big game. 
Probably not a big enough game, but we'll see. Okay, Headliner Scarlet reveals Robber. It's actually face down too, which is really funny. Okay, land. I guess, oh wait, hold on. I don't need to tap, I'll tap it like this. Glory bringer. So I don't get like mana leaked or whatever. And boom, that's the match. I gotta admit, this is a completely unreasonable deck and draw, and uh, we will take it, one and oh. All right, time for round two, I'm on the play. Let's get some jewelry in the opening hand, shall we? Playing against uh, White Weenie Splash Academy, apparently. <clears throat> All right, well, I gotta keep this hand. I, I need to draw a land, but you know, this, deck, this deck's got some lands in it, a few. And if I draw Soul Ring or Mana Crypt, it's over. If I draw Mana Crypt, it, it is just over. Uh, because this hand with the name Sticker Goblin has turn three, the option of one of these fine dragons. <laughs> I think it's going to depend mostly on like what Dan has played by then. Given that he's got removal, Bone Horde is probably not my top priority. It's probably just getting a gold span into play. And <clears throat> my fail case of hitting four mana is playing sneak attack and sneaking in some stuff. All right. Mana Crypt, Mana Crypt, Mana Crypt. No, Mountain's okay. Mountain is a, is a good consolation prize. Stack rank, it's like Mana Crypt, then Soul Ring, then Mox, then Mountain, then every other card in my deck, pretty much. <laughs> Dan is the skit. He's got Student of Warfare in his deck. It's ridiculous. Uh, oh, all right. Well, there we go. Please not four mana. Though, honestly, I'll be fine no matter what. Five mana, okay. Um, I mean, it's got to be Sneak. Feels like sneaking in something's gonna be really good here. And let's just sneak in a Troxa while, while we got it. I get Creature Land Artifact Sorcery. So Artifact is gonna be Soul Ring, Mountain, Archon, Fiery Confluence. Yeah, that looks pretty, pretty much great to me. And might as well hit for seven. <clears throat> Pass the turn here and then next turn. I mean, if Sneak lives, we've got it all. If Sneak doesn't live, kind of still have it all. <laughs> we're, we're good either way. All right, takes it, draws, and then Jace is here. It's going to be pretty tough for him to, to do something here. Oh, in fact, he did not, and that is game. All right, up a game here. So going into the sideboard. Oh, we don't have a sideboard. Great. <laughs> Let's get back in there. All right, on the draw here, and turn two, Reckless Impulse. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess I'll keep this hand. I feel like I shouldn't mulligan this. I don't know. I got turn two, Reckless Impulse, which is a pretty good way to dig for Mox and Mana Crypt. And then if I can find any of those, I can play an Emerald Caliph into Bone Horde Dracosaur. Like, that seems pretty good. Oh, Chromo Seed Shark. All right. Because I'm not playing Robber of the Rich. Let's go Reckless Impulse. Let's not hit any Atroxas. Atroxa Carnosaur. Okay. Uh, I have outs. Name Sticker Goblin. Roll a six. <laughs> I mean, I always want to draw Name Sticker Goblin because this deck is kind of built around that card. Esper Sentinel. Okay. Into Jace. Sure. Soul Ring's pretty good. Let's go Soul Ring, and I think I'll pay the one to prevent it, and then cast Robber of the Rich, and just pass the turn here. Troxa and Carnosaur. That's why I didn't want to put Impulse in my deck, but hey, you know what? Drawing either of those wouldn't have been all that impressive. Jace... I don't really know what Dan did, to be honest. I saw him beat BK round one. Uh, he's a Jace deck with no spells, an Academy deck with no artifacts, and a White Weenie deck that, like, kind of functions? I don't know. It's very weird. I guess you're hoping to draw, like, the right proportions. I guess I can't really talk. I put Misha's Workshop in, you know, my Nissa decks and whatnot. I've got... The, if you remember from a couple months ago, or, I don't know, a month and a half ago, maybe, the Kappa Cannoneer Misha's Workshop Gristlebrand deck, like... I'll admit I'm guilty of those sins as well, but uh, yeah, I still think it's uh, it's somewhat nonsensical. He's got three cards in hand, two cards in hand. He can play 
I can't even play Virtue of Loyalty this turn because he discarded it. Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking of, of he had cast it and have it be exiled. Yeah, well, we'll find out. I mean, I'm going to get to play a Bonehorn Dracosaur next turn. And that's probably going to be pretty good. We'll see. I'm not taking tons of damage here. I'm taking an extra two. Okay, I'll take my two. And play Bone Horde into whatever play he's got. I don't know. Emerald Captain also could be good at some point, but he knows my whole hand, so I'm just going to play the Bone Horde. It's not like he's not aware that that's a thing. Oh, all right. I guess I'm not going to play the Bone Horde yet. Oh, and then put Lutri in the hand. Sure. Uh, Noise Marine will be nice at some point. All right, let's play the... Ember Wild Caliph and draw a card end of turn. I need to hit a fifth land here, so I've got to do that. And then I can chump the Chrome Host Seed Shark with Robber of the Rich. I probably will. I suppose if he animates a token then attacks with like everything, that could be a problem. No, this is unexpectedly absent, it's also going to be a problem. Because I really don't want to draw those two cards. That's my next two draws. All right, all right. Um, I'm dead here. Let's go to game three. And still no sideboarding stuff. Let's just be on the play and hopefully not miss on a reckless impulse this time. All right, I'm on the play. And also, we were on the draw and Dan opened on a mox. So hopefully now we're on the play and we open on, let's say, a mox and a soul ring because I'm getting greedy. <laughs> I'll take any of them, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, I will keep this hand. Turn five through the breach. Well, hopefully not turn five. Five mana through the breach Atroxa setting up against a deck with no counters is pretty good. And Robber on the play could also be kind of nice. Especially if he doesn't have a one drop. Oh, nice. All right. And if I draw a Mox or a Mana Crypt. Oh, Soul Ring. So good. All right. Soul Ring. And then Roberto. And obviously if he has one of the ways to kill Soul Ring that he has in his deck, that's a shame. But... Robber is still going to put some good pressure on him. Can I hit a Mox? No, uh, Virtue. Okay. I mean, it means if he spends turn two killing Soul Ring, I get to, I get to cast Virtue. Oh, he's got his Mox. Okay. All right. That's annoying. But I still get to cast Virtue, and I could draw Mana Crypt here. Mog does well. All right. Send with Robber. Exile something good. Oh, March of Otherworldly Light. Yeah, this is great. Because I'm going to go March on the Mox for that. And then Virtue. And then those trade. And then now I can later cast the Virtue if I find a <laughs> if I find double white, which is possible with this Magda, but difficult otherwise. So he didn't activate Lutri. All right. And let's play Magda here. I could have played Magda last turn, but I kind of want to just get more value. He did, so he didn't play anything or put Lutri into hand. Very strange. Okay, now Lutri's in hand. All right. Um, I guess, does Dan have Mana Tithe? Let me, I gotta go find out. All right, we didn't see Mana Tithe, so I'm just gonna cast Breach here. I think he might have no more lies in his deck. Or he does have no more lies. That might have been what he was leaving up last turn. But he would have countered Magda, so I don't really even know. He could have Path here. So I get Land, Creature, Enchantment, Artifact. Oh, nice. That means I got Sneak, Mana Crypt, Mountain. And I guess I'll just take Grizzlebrand. Seems like, seems like the play. And then I'll send for a million damage here. You can Path the Atroxa. You can Path the Magda if you want. <laughs> I'm happy enough either way. And then next turn, I get to sneak in a Gristlebrand, most likely. I just don't have to play sneak into a counterspell. All right, because telling me he didn't see Mana Tithe, and I'm like, well, he doesn't have it. <laughs> so I'm going to get to send here. He clearly has Path in hand. So let's see. What is our options? He can Path to stop the Giant Atroxa hit. And then takes 5 down to 10, and I get a Treasure. Or he can Path the Magda and take 10. I kind of hope he paths Magda, because then Fiery Confluence is lethal. But I think I, I have a pretty good shot at winning the game, kind of regardless here. But we'll, we'll see. All right. Pathing Atroxa. Sure. 
That play makes sense. You know Gristlebrand is coming. You don't want to take too much damage, I guess. <laughs> I can also cast a <laughs> Virtue of Loyalty at some point here. Because I have about to get a second treasure off Magda. And he kind of has to do something. He's at 10 facing down 5 points of damage. Yeah. And that's a 2-0. No big deal. Alrighty. Time for round 3. Battle against Quiniac on a red-black mid. And hope I don't get inquisitioned here. Getting my mana crypt would certainly make this hand worse. But turn 1 Magda, turn 2 Lamplight Phoenix is a pretty good start. And then if I draw Sneak or... Breach, then we're, we're really getting there. Oh, turn on Dragon's Rage Channel or Mox. Look at you go. Oh, name sticker Goblin? Sure, I'm in. Can I hit five, please? Oh, just four. All right, well, let's just play the the, the Phoenix, I think, because the Magda is probably only getting one attack in regardless, and I think that I'd rather just play the more expensive card and the 3-3, three, three, though I guess I can cast them both the next turn. Either way, dang, I hit the one out of one to six roll. Well, collected brutality, killing the goblin, and then discarding a Liliana and making me not discard anything. All right. And this puts three card types in the graveyard. It's not enough for the Lamplight Phoenix. All right, let's just go draw sneak attack here. <laughs> well, that means I do need to find sneak attack pretty bad. And... Let's cast Magda. Might as well tap the mana crypt though. Don't have any reason to leave it up. Well, Sneaker Breach are fantastic draws. If somehow the Magda gets attack two attacks in. Oh, alright. It looks like it might get at least one. I'm gonna take eight here. I'm not gonna chump. Alright. Let's draw. I want the flip again. Oh, there's Breach. That's a Breacher. Alright. Through the Breach, two cards in hand. Yeah, I'm just going to put Archon into play. And that would have been 12, 17. Turn three kill, just like we drew it up. Not even going to pretend a sideboard. Let's get to game two. All right, on the draw here. And what do we got? We have a mulligan. This hand, I can confidently mulligan. It's all, It's I guess it has a three drop, but it's like two five drops, two four drops. None of my acceleration. All right. I'm keeping this. I'm gonna put back, I think I'm gonna put back the Bone Horde Dracosaur. Cause I'm gonna play Turn on Reckless Impulse and then I'm gonna play Season Pyro, probably. I I could put back, oh, Quinn Mold of Ford. Oh no, no. <laughs> okay, this is a way I can lose. You take the Mox here. Obviously I had to keep this hand, but Quinn has two cards in hand so I should have enough time to draw Landy took the Reckless Impulse. All right, I'm going to play the Mox so I don't get discarded again. But he doesn't have another discard card if he did that, I wouldn't imagine. Okay, and I drew a land, so... Land, Season Pyro or Night Scythe? Um, let's just go Season Pyro. And the reason I want to do that is I can discard Breach and Night Scythe, and I'm going to look for land so I can basically empty my hand before playing Carnage Interpreter. And now I'm just gonna curve into Headliner Scarlet here. Fable is pretty good. Carnosaur. Uh, let's just still play Headliner Scarlet. You can't block. And I can attack for seven. Yeah, let's just attack for seven. You can, I'll let the Fable do its thing. You, Quinn's gonna have two cards in hand. Still gonna get to loot and maybe discard something good to necromancy. I hope that's not the case. But I think just dealing seven this turn is better than dealing five. I could leave back some things. Discarded one land. All right. You can play something here. And then next turn, I've got a bunch of options. Archfiend of the Dross. Okay. Exile of Mountain. Mm hmm. Archfiend's pretty good. Not gonna lie. Quinn's at 10. And I'm just gonna send here. I assume block the headliner. 
and then Carnosaur the Archfiend here. And this way I don't randomly die to that thing. Now Quinn's at six, gets to make a Fable token or flip the Fable. The next turn I get to Carnage Interpreter. I mean, Fable's a pretty good way to come back from a mold of four. Not gonna lie. Okay, Decay's a Chaos Adventure. Wow. All right, Int with the reflection. I definitely could lose this game. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of losing right now. Huh. Yeah, I guess attacking and leaving back the and letting the goblin hit, but I just didn't really think there was a good time to do otherwise. Mana Crypto, that's actually pretty good still. Carnage Interpreter. And let's crack one of the clues now. Okay, I guess I'll leave that in hand. I could attack with all three to take the Monarch, but I don't really want to do that or take the initiative. I want to keep my blockers back. I'm actually, yeah, I'm probably going to lose. I, if I draw a Troxa or Archon, I'm going to win. It's also possible I could draw some big dragons to win. So he gets to trap me down to nine and then attack with 12 points of trample, but I can block with Interpreter on this, the big Caves of Chaos adventure. Go to seven, block down the Goblin. Trump with the elementals. Something along those lines. If Quinn has much else, I am gonna lose. I mean, Archfiend is great against me. This card traded for two good creatures. Okay, and Quinn gets to look at a bunch of the top cards here. Reflection, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. What a card. And I got a nine. And just send with send with all three. Yeah, that makes sense. I think if I draw something to sneak, I, I have a shot here. But otherwise, we're pretty much done for. Also, if Quinn plays another good card, like a removal spell on the Carnage Interpreter, I think I just die. Because I'm taking 12 points of trample. Yeah, I would just die if, if that happened. Okay. Don't exile anything too good. Gix's Command, uncastable, I think. Oh, I got exile. Oh, and a mox, so it's not uncastable. Cool. Uh, is there any way to survive if I? So I could because of the Gix's command, the answer I can't really. So I'm just gonna block, block, and then if I chump that, hold on. If I do this, I take two down to seven. Then I go to two. No, I'm gonna have to double block here. There's not really a better way to do this, I don't think. All right. I got a four. Yeah, it's just going to be on whether I find a good sneak target. I don't think the Gix's command is going to be massively relevant to the outcome of the game, if that's even what Quinn's playing. Stomp me down to two, uh, so I have to win a coin flip now. Okay. Uh, I mean... There are good sneak targets. Oh, Noise Marine's a very good one. All right. I lost the flip. Oh, lost to a mold of four. Lost to that flip. I mean, Quinn had to have everything go perfectly, but that's how mold of fours work. Okay. Or when winning on them, I guess. All right. I mean, that was a beating. Go to game three. All right. I'm on the play here. And... Yeah, I will keep this hand. On the play, I think I've got to keep this because I have a turn one figure. Turn two, I can pump it. And then I need to draw a land. But if I draw a land, I have Season Pyro, which kind of gets me to whatever my next play is pretty easily. And I'm playing against a deck with like Thoughtseize and Inquisition type cards. I just don't think mulling is that great. Granted, the, my best cards, if I mulled them, couldn't get Thoughtseized because I would just play my Mox or Soul Ring or whatever on turn one. But yeah, look. I have two good three drops, a four drop, another land. I don't care. I mean, you take Season Pyro. I'll probably, I don't really want to play Carnage Interpreter on three, but, you know, I will if I have to. Best card I could draw right now. I mean, pretty clearly Mana Crypt or Soul. I mean, and Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, and Sapphire are all pretty close. Depends what he takes, I guess. If he takes the Season Pyro, 
like if, if he leaves Season Pyro, then Mox Sapphire or Nement, no Mana Crypt's still probably the best card. Because then I just get to go Season Pyro on two. I think Season Pyro's the card you're supposed to take, unless he's got a Necromancy, in which case taking the Carnosaur could set that up. But we'll we'll have to see. Alright. Would really like to draw one of my artifacts this turn. But drawing a mountain would, would at least set me up for turn three, so we'll find out. Whoa, Flame Tongue? Never in a million would I have guessed Flame Tongue was the card that was going to get taken there, but uh, there we go. All right. Attack for two. Is this like necromancing or animate deading the Flame Tongue? No, Dothy Voidwalker. Well, I'm going to Carnosaur that right now. Because uh, if you do this the wrong way, it's so bad for you. If... If the Dothy Voidwalker isn't, uh, like, if I try to do it on his turn while it's around, it can, he can just animate it. All right, there goes that Fable. Let's go. Let's go. What am I even hoping for, to be honest? I don't know. Um, I'm going to attack with the Figure of Destiny. It's just not going to block, of course. Oh. Hmm. Okay. All right. I mean, I guess I'll take that because I have a land to, to play, so it seems fine to me. Huh. All right. Swamp and Dragon's Reach channel got discarded, so that's not even anything too bad. I'm scared of Caves of Chaos Adventure and Archfiend. Okay. Well, I get to attack with figure at least. So that's pretty good. Oh, Mox is really nice. Uh, let's go Mox. Reckless Impulse, I think. Mountain Robber. Let's attack here. Okay. And I'm probably going to play Mountain. I'm just deciding, would I rather have a Carnage Interpreter to play or Season Pyromancer? I think I'd rather have the Carnage Interpreter. Because... A 5-5 five, five Menace seems better than a 2-2 two, two and, and a 1-1. One, one. And it feels like I have the time to, to go through some of these clues. Plus, I have Robber next turn, so I have two creatures attacking next turn still. Scry 2 is not too bad. I mean, this is going to be a close game. Fable, like, <laughs> Quinn went Thoughtseize into Voidwalker into Fable into Caves of Chaos Adventure. That's a great start. 1-2-3-4 on the play. Or on the draw, rather. Um, and now... What did I do? Turn one figure, turn two pump figure, turn three pump figure. So like, yeah, behind on spell count here for sure. But Carnage Interpreter and Robber are both pretty good. Drawing a mox that turn was kind of nice. Okay. Um, land. Robber. Just going to attack here and see what happens. You have a way to kill the robber pre-combat? No, I guess not. All right. Robert triggers. Can I get something good here? Ooh, Collective Brutality. I don't mind that. I will be killing that reflection of Kiki Jiki if, if able. All right. And stomp the Carnage Interpreter into what? Into Lightning Bolt? Oh, into a Braid. Okay. Interesting. Um... I no longer am that interested in casting Collective Brutality, I think. So I have a Season Pyro in my graveyard. I think I'd rather spend the mana on making Pyro than, than the clues, because I have two attackers. Wow, just had a lot of stuff there. At the very least has a Bone Crusher. Okay, and hopefully nothing else. Ugh. And an Archfiend? Wow. My deck is sick, but Quinn has just been drawn literally perfect. So it's going to be tough to beat that. All right. Big thing. Big thing, please. I mean, that is pretty good. Let's draw a card. That's also pretty good. Uh, attack for five down to nine. Yeah, that actually works out pretty nicely. All right. I'm at 20, so... Oh, actually, hold on. Let's turn off auto yields. Let's attack... 
because I want to be able to play my land because I don't think I hit a land yet. All right, and then I get to play it post combat and crack more clues. Okay, Quinn's at nine, I'm at 20. I'm, I have the initiative. Wow, I've also top decked really well. All right, just miss this turn because the the four one isn't gonna help block against Glorybringer. It kind of depends on what Quinn leaves untapped, but if but Quinn also has a bit of pressure to finish the game because of the Archfiend, though it's probably not going to come down to that. The question is what stays back. Going to attack with at least one of them. Hopefully didn't draw <laughs> like Gix's command because then I just lose. I also have outs with these clues of finding like a second thing to play this turn that's relevant. There's not that many. My Carnosaur is gone. Noise Marine doesn't do anything. I guess if I draw Sneak, then I could also draw a creature. So, because I'm going to draw a card, then I'm going to draw another card. And I actually even have enough mana to draw another card. So if it's like Sneak plus any other creature in those three cards, then that's something. I can't tell if Quinniac thinking here is good or bad for me, because it could mean that Quinn drew a nice spell and is figuring out how to use it, it could also mean Quinn drew nothing and is just not sure which creature to leave back. Because it's not 100% obvious. Probably don't want to attack for 10 here. I mean, you could, so if Quinn attacks for 10, leaves back the 4-1. All right, so I don't just win here, but I also don't die. Okay, gets a 4-1. Probably didn't draw anything else good, right? Otherwise... You'd maybe attack with the Bone Crusher as well? No, you have something. Damn. All right. That's tough. What could it be? Next turn, I Glory Bringer, the Bone Crusher. Quinn takes six, goes to three. I take two, four, six. Sorry. Two, four, six. I go to eight. Archfiend attacks me down to two and then hits Throne of the Dead three. All right, go ahead and play the card. You got a card. I mean, uh, if it was Gix's command, I assume you'd attack with everything. If it's like a reanimate, just reanimate the flame tongue. But also, you'd have attacked with Bone Crusher. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. This has been a sick match. I I really am not complaining. Like Quinn beat me on a mold of four. I had to get really unlucky to mold of four, and then just like just went perfect, 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 perfect. In this game, I'm beating a pretty sick curve. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. But Thoughtseize, Voidwalker, into Fable, into Caves of Chaos Adventure is pretty disgusting with a Braid plus uh, Bone Crusher as follow-up into Archfiend, like just everything. But my deck's also really good, and I had a pretty solid draw. Not Nothing busted. I didn't draw the Mox until a little too late here, unfortunately. No plays. All right, end of turn. Crack a clue. Fiery Confluence, okay. So land probably wins me the game too, then. Oh, and I get a Headliner Scarlet card. I forgot about that. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. Soul Ring. Glory Bringer. Go to attack here. Please don't have a way to kill Glory Bringer pre-attacks. Oh, Dismember? Oh, Bitter Triumph. Oh! Whew. Well, Fiery Confluence is a pretty good draw, so I retract any... <laughs> Complaints about perfect draws. I was the one who had to get so lucky to win this game. I drew Headliner Scarlet into Glorybringer. It was awesome. Dun, dun, dun. And that's a 3-0 for Big Red, baby. There we go. Let's check in on the team. All right, I wanted a little bonus content. So we're going to watch game three of tom martell against charles uh, tuxedo rose there we played tom round one and had the best draw of our entire draft against him so that was nice so charles has the like five color itali channel oath of druids combo deck he just uh shielders edict the urza leaving tom with just a one one which ren and six took care of but this looks like a pretty even game six cards versus four cards six lands versus five car five lands i mean Ren and six in play is obviously a pretty big game, so I think that uh, definitely helps Charles' side. Oh, there's a channel. Can we get an Emrakul? Could be Channel Atali. That would be sweet, too. 
BK went 2-1, so we're up 6-4 to four right now. So we just need one more win. <laughs> Channel Virtue of Persistence. Yeah, that's the normal play to make. <laughs> Into the stomping ground. <clears throat> I knew this was going to deliver. And uh, now Tom has to get rid of that Virtue, which he does immediately with Get Lost. All right, all right. <laughs> virtue was going to get back a Torsten, too. And I guess an Urza, it's eventually. So... Jeskai mana here with Xander's Lounge for Tom. All four colors for Charles. He doesn't really have many, many blue cards. The Ren and Six can get back a Plains. That's not even that impressive. Parallax Wave Down, huh? Oh, Currency Converter. That's a good use for those extra lands from Ren and Six. And Ren and Six is going to tick up. Get that Plains back. Start converting that Currency is my guess. Yeah, there we go. Tom's on three cards in hand and has cards like Mox Opal and stuff like that in his deck. He's got Retrofitter, I guess. He wouldn't mind drawing. And then Charles passes the turn. Okay. I don't think he can play to land that turn. But Martel's losing to this Converter Ren nonsense. Like Charles is getting cycling lands through, getting treasures, drawing cards. And uh, I guess Tom's had enough of it. Here comes the hard cast Kappa Cannon here. No other artifacts in play. Six mana. You love to see it. You know, there was three people at this table with artifacts as their strategy. I'm not even counting Charles. Tom had hit Mox Opal, Kappa Cannon here, Urza, right? So he's got Retrofitter. Got a lot of the tools. Uh, ooh, Gorio's Vengeance on Torsten end of turn. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Sam Rolf had Misha's Workshop, One Ring, Portal. We didn't play him. He was the one we didn't play. And then Dan had that White Weenie Academy deck that was also kind of wild. Oh, look at that. Picking up Atali and three fetch lands. Has enough mana to slam Atali here. And that Torsten can attack for seven, too. Why not? So Torsten will go away without providing one ones, unfortunately. But I think this Atali is going to be a pretty big game, hopefully. Let's, uh, let's see what Tom's got there. <clears throat> or, or what Charles hits, rather. Oh, is he not casting a Tolly? Great. If he's doing something other than casting a Tolly, that sounds even better. Because, you know, he has that option. Could it be, like, show and tell? I guess we'll find out. Oh, Yogmoth's Will. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, wow. Yogmoth's Will lets him cast Channel cast a tolly and then tear asunder the <laughs> the kappa cannon here and pay four life for the ward this is ridiculous yogmas will channel into a tolly huh yeah that's like a pretty normal thing to do sure why not mm, okay paying some life here let's see what's going on shield drizidict oh i guess that's actually better fine Fine, I, I, I'll allow that. And what do we have with the rest of this? We're going to convert. No, 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 no. This is a disaster in motion. He discarded Tali. There's Yogmas will in play. He can't Gorio's Vengeance it. Oh, Charles. Tragedy. I could see it coming when he started tapping that converter. I knew exactly what was going on. I still think Charles is in pretty good shape, but uh, Yagmas will is is you know it's, it's a card. It's got it's got its restrictions. Let's see what the follow up here is. Regrowth the virtue of persistence. Yeah, that, that that there we go. Might as well pay some life to to map token. If I think maybe I don't know. Kind of close there. All right. Well, we could have seen a hard cast Atali, but instead we're going to settle for hitting with Torsten. Leaving Tom with those three cards in hand. And on the plus side, Charles doesn't take a bunch of damage off the channel. But still, I would have liked to see that Atali hit the board. So his last creature now is Emrakul. But he's got Converter to put it in the graveyard, and he still has Shallow Grave in his deck. So that's still very much in play. Let's see here. All right, Updraft lost an O3, which <laughs> has been most of my experiences. Uh, and then we've got Martel playing here for the tie. Charles playing for the win. BK at 2-1. At and Tom firing off a time warp. Yeah, that doesn't do too much. Oh, we got a live update. Charles has showed me his hand. It is, it is pretty good. 
It's got Tribal Flames, Tamiyo, Swords to Plowshares, Virtue. So I feel like I feel like we're in a pretty good spot given that Tom has nothing in play. Just cycle the time warp. Obviously, having an Atali hit would have been nice, but honestly, this looks pretty good. Can Tamiyo back Parallax Wave or, or Terra Sunder has Virtue Swords? So we're, we're, we're locking it in here. And if we can get this, we walk away with the dub. Okay, Tom's firing off something here. But Charles has a couple little engines going on and can't really get decked with Emrakul floating around. I assume Emrakul hasn't been exiled for anything, no. So, like, at some point, he can, like, discard Emrakul with Currency Converter to reshuffle. It's also not impossible to get up to hardcast Emrakul with planes under the thing. That's one treasure. Sicarian Infiltrator for one? Oh, wow. Tom didn't want to fire it off for more. What is in his hand? I would have... I would have wanted to fire it off for the max amount, but I guess Tom has bigger fish to fry. Into Displacer Kitten, okay. Into Pearl Flickered Infiltrator, no, that totally explains it. All right, draw a card. So every non-creature spell Tom casts draws him a card. His Teferi Time Raveler is already gone, luckily. So Tom did go Hallowed Fountain to Teferi, huh? <laughs> no, he took Necromancy still, but then he still took Teferi. Interesting. I or no, no, Quinn took the Necromancy. So yeah, I don't even know. I don't remember what Tom took second pick here. But with two cards in hand and Charles with a bunch of removal if he gets to untap, it feels pretty good here. All right, Tom just played a Walking Ballista for zero into Balance. Ooh, Balance. So now Charles discards his entire hand. <laughs> Let's see. That, that's amazing. Okay, so... Tom has eight lands, Charles has seven, so Tom loses a land. But Tom has no cards, doesn't know what his top card is. <laughs> that currency converter is ching, 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 ringing up a, a storm here. I mean, this seems fine. Maybe the Atali wouldn't have mattered if Tom was going to do this anyway. And I imagine you want to put most of the cards under currency converter. It's kind of interesting. So... You can get them all back with Converter eventually if you have time. The risk is like, let's say you put Tamiyo under Currency Converter and then Tom's next turn he draws like Prismatic Endings with the Currency Converter. If you don't have a time to get Tamiyo back in there, it is going to be gone forever. I think what Charles wants to do is probably put some number of things under Currency Converter, but maybe not all of them. Like the lands, for example seem fine to not put under Currency Converter, because at this point, he's just going to be put making 2-2 ro two, two rogues every turn. Also, Ren and 6 is getting close to ultimate. So that looks pretty good. And you can go, like, make a 2-2 two, two and start using map tokens on it. I like that. Okay, map token, hit swamp, map token, hit reveal, oust. Uh, oust doesn't seem... A card I would really want in my hand at this point, or on top of my deck at this point in time. Ren and six, get back to land. And then Tom is in a spot where he needs to beat a Ren and six and a Roge token that's about to be joined by another one. So he needs to have a good play this turn. We'll see what he's got. Urza Kappa Cannoneer is gone. I mean, Retrofitter Foundry would be kind of a slam here. Retrofitter, make a token. Oh, what did Tom draw? Pyrite Spellbomb. No, that's not going to do too much. He can keep running six from ulting for two turns, but like it's not really a winning play. He's got to crack Spellbomb and hope to draw something that does, you know, something. Charles has no response that really matters. And then Tom finds... Ooh, something expensive? What is this? He Oliphant out of nowhere. I don't think that's actually that much of a problem, though. <laughs> Keeping the oust would have been nice. I, I wouldn't have kept the oust still. So now the two rogues can block Oliphant, but Oliphant can kill the Red and Six or get the Red and Six down to uh, six loyalty again. So it does stop the Red and Six from ulting, which is really funny. If Tom draws a, another follow up here, Things could get dicey. I mean, drawing a six drop off the top is pretty good already, right? 
And that's part of the reason the land cycles are so good. Sometimes you just draw them and they're so much better than a land. All right. Come on, Tom. Don't, don't peel back to back here. Double block Oliphant. Ren and six goes down to six loyalty. That buys Tom another turn. Charles still can make another rogue and then also does get to draw for his turn. So at some point he might find some a little bit of action here. Okay, convert some currency. Probably put Tamiya on the graveyard is my guess. Or I guess it's tribal, I'm sure. It doesn't matter too much, but okay, block, block. Assuming Tom didn't draw a removal spell. Yep, this takes Ren and Six down to six. Oh, and what's the follow-up? Is it Retrofitter? Did he do it? Oh, it's Blade Splicer. Okay. So that, again, will keep Ren and Six from ulting. But let's see, Charles is on nine mana, up to ten. I'm just looking at the hardcast Emrakul outs, to be honest. Let's see, let's see what he can find here. All right, looks like Currency Converter is getting activated to draw a card. Okay, that definitely is... Uh, where you can go. So what is that doing? It means you don't want a 2-2 two -two to chump, but the thing is, even if Charles makes a rogue, he can't stop Ren and Six from getting ticked down from the golem. So at that point, it kind of makes sense to me to, to just go to try to find a, an actual spell that does something. It's got to have some left. <laughs> and Then discarded Prismatic Vista and chose not to put it under the converter, which seems fine. Oh, and then we're playing a spell. I like that. Prismatic Ending and then Ping the Blade Splicer. I think is... Well, it's actually close. Yeah, just going up with Ren and Six means the Blade Splicer again takes you off ult, but then next turn you can play a blocker and you're back at ult faster than if you minus one did because you're plus one instead of minus one. -ing. Okay, back to Tom. How many spells can Tom draw in a row? <laughs> All right, Martel. Oh, another one? No. Is this Retrofitter? That'd be so sick if he drew Retrofitter right here. Okay, I guess it's not. Basalt Monolith. Well, that barely counts. It doesn't do anything. All right, so now as it currently stands, Tom, Charles is going to win next turn if Tom doesn't find a way to stop Ren and Six from ulting. Because I assume once Ren and Six ults with like, even with just Tribal Flames, Cast you can just cast a bunch of tribal flames and now Charles didn't even play that land because he needs to save it to discard to Ren and Six triple tribal flames Tom out now retrofitter doesn't matter that's a dead draw because a removal spell will help oh Tom didn't draw a removal all right I mean you might as well convert make a two two draw slam the ult on Ren and Six. And then Tribal Flames you. Charles has three lands in hand. Boom, there we go. That's the draft. Oh, that was such a sick uh, last game. I'm glad we tuned in. What a wild match. Game one, Tom beat Emrakul and uh, Itali getting cast on the same turn. So this was a good one. And uh, that gives us the dub. That was our win number seven. Draft winners. And uh, let me take a look at the deck. Yeah, this was a nice one. Obviously, I was heavily subsidized by Mox, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring. I'm not going to say otherwise. But let's say let's say I had just Soul Ring and then two more mountains in the deck. This would still be, I think, a pretty solid deck, really missing the Rite of Flame then. You know, and like Lamplight or Phoenix was pretty bad. Reckless Impulse also was kind of bad. But Name Sticker Goblin was amazing with all these. The Breach Sneak Plan was awesome. I had... Carnage Interpreter and Seasoned Pyromancer, so I didn't run out of gas. Headliner Scarlet was great. Flame Tongue was great. Well, I guess I didn't really cast Flame Tongue and Emerald, but they are great cards. Fire Confluence won us the last game. That was certainly fantastic. And look at these fives. Very good Murder's Row fives, really taking advantage of the Mana Crypt and Mox, as well as the Soul Ring, of course. And then even had a couple early drops that were pretty good. I like Big Red. 3-0 this draft, 2 on the last one. 5-1 and one with Big Red over two drafts? Yeah, that really isn't bad. Well... That'll do it for today. Exciting draft. Exciting conclusion. Opened a ton of power. I love that. And uh, you know what? I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. I appreciate you watching these, and uh, I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.